if you watched my last video, you'll know that I'm in the market for a new bike. And that's why I'm here at Kinetic Cycles in Coquitlam, BC, my favorite shop. And I'm gonna be looking for a new bike. I'm gonna go through a couple of the bikes that I'm considering buying for next year. And you know what, we're gonna talk about why I think they're unique, why I'm looking at them, just quick little overviews. But we're also maybe gonna break some dreams. We're gonna weigh them and see what these bikes actually weigh, just for fun, not that it's a big deal. But let's go take a look at some bikes. What should I ride for next year? Let's go find out. This is the Norco Range C1, and this is definitely one of the bikes that I've been considering. I had an opportunity to ride this bike this summer, and it's definitely an interesting bike. Now you can look up all the stats and geo and everything on their website, but I thought I would just quickly go through what makes this bike something that I would consider or what sort of makes it stand out. First, you'll notice that linkage in the rear is a high pivot. Now I've had a chance to ride a few high pivot bikes now, but the thing about this bike, it's the most high pivot feeling-ish bike that I've had the chance to ride. And what I mean by that is I could definitely feel and notice that it was high pivot. It felt like the rear wheel really was moving backward quite a bit. So as you would come and you would hit sort of a straight edge hit, the rear wheel would kind of go backwards up and around it and make that, well, a smoother ride for you, allowing you hopefully to go quite a bit faster. Another thing that's interesting that Norco is doing is they are changing the geo on all their sizes. So on this particular medium, it has say a 63 and a half degree head tube angle and maybe on something like the large that I would ride, they change that to 63 and a quarter degrees for the head tube angle. And I think that's really interesting that they are taking the time to make sure that every size feels and rides the same for that rider. And you don't see a lot of brands doing that. I think in some of the other cases where I've had the chance to ride high pivots, it doesn't feel like the high pivot is all that necessary in that I couldn't really tell the difference between a high pivot and sort of just a regular suspension setup. Maybe there was less pedal kickback, but having to deal with the idler and this whole extra long chain system, it, it definitely is annoying. So you have to keep that in mind when you're looking at these high pivot bikes. When you're pedaling, you don't really lose that much efficiency. And Norco bikes are extremely comfortable. They have a very steep seat tube angle and you feel very over the bike. But it might just be me, but just hearing the idler alone when you're on sort of that road climb, you're just always aware of like, this is just a little bit more work than I'd like it to be. And this bike, it does pedal reasonably well for how big it is, but it's definitely slower. But on the flip side of that, this is the biggest bike that I've ever had the chance to ride in that it's the most downhill bike feeling. This literally feels like a mini downhill bike. I know people have said that about a lot of other bikes, but this is the closest to that being true. If you had told me when I was riding it that basically yeah, this is a downhill bike, but we put a single crown on it and put 12 speeds in the rear. I'd be like, oh, okay. It feels like that. It feels like a downhill bike. I would definitely ride this at the park, ride any trails at the park, the roughest trails. It is probably smoother feeling than my downhill bike that I used to have. Another thing about the range that I did find maybe a bit tricky to deal with, something you might have to get used to is how low this sort of bottom part of this pivot is, where the bottom bracket is. I definitely hit it a couple times. I think I would get used to it. I would learn that it was there. Uh, but yeah, this thing definitely sticks out a little further than I'd like. And I do actually like that they put the Onyx hubs on this bike. I think that's really interesting. The Onyx hubs are those silent hubs. They don't make any clicking. I kind of go on two sides of this. I either like a really loud hub. I want it to sound like a BMX clicking really loud. Or I'm pretty interested in this Onyx hub. Because listen to that. Or don't, don't listen to that. Totally silent. I think hearing just the trail is actually pretty interesting. So we'll quickly just go through this build. We are one carbon wheels, Onyx hubs, SRAM code RSC brakes, DD carbon bars, Fox 38 fork, factory, Fox DHX2 rear shock, that's a coil, and also the factory, SRAM carbon cranks, one up dropper, and Max's tires. Now it is 29 only, so if you're not into 29ers, well, <laughs> unfortunately you're out of luck. And it is carbon only. I believe in their video they said they had some 
pretty crazy designs in here that they could only really get done with carbon. So unfortunately there is no aluminum version. And I think because of that as well, maybe all the engineering that's gone into this and it's called carbon only, uh, the bikes are quite expensive. This is the C1 baller version. It's got carbon wheels, all carbon frame, like I just mentioned, carbon cranks, carbon bars. The best parts of everything except maybe electronic shifting and seat post if you want that. But other than that, this is basically uh, as nice a bike as you can get. That being said, all of the ranges are quite expensive and uh, yeah, but there aren't really, there isn't really another bike like this one, that's for sure. So downhill bike that you can pedal up the hill, something I'm definitely considering. But let's check out the next bike. This is the Noli Chilcotin. And yes, that is how you pronounce Noli. It's not no, not, it's not Noli. It's Noli, named after Noel, who designs the bikes and runs Noli. But this is the Chilcotin 151 and let's take a look at it. Now this isn't the particular build that I think I would be after. This is the Chilcotin 151 model. I would be after the 167 model. And what that's referring to is the amount of rear travel. In this case, it's 151 millimeters with 160 mil fork. But I think I'd like the bigger one that comes with 167 mil of rear travel and 170 mil fork. And they're actually the same bike. And the only difference between the two is, well, the stroke of the, the fork and the stroke of the shock. The 167 just has a longer stroke shock and gives the bike more travel. And that's the first thing that's pretty interesting about this bike is you actually get two bikes. And I've actually heard you can run, I think 158 mil version as well. So maybe you get three bikes out of it. And all you really need to do is change your shock or the stroke of your shock to get multiple bikes. Now this is another bike, I think, well, especially in this 167 version, it is a big feeling bike. I think they would say that it falls more under kind of the enduro to free ride category rather than sort of the enduro trail like some of the other bikes. But that's kind of what I like and that's why I'm pretty interested in it. Now, like I mentioned for the other bikes, there is all the sort of regular stuff you can look up on their website. But I just want to talk about what makes this particular bike unique and why, well, why I'm looking at it for my next bike. The first thing I really like about Noli is they don't do any carbon bikes right now. They kind of looked and they said, well, why don't we just do a high quality aluminum? That's gonna be better. And let's just stick with that. Let's stick with what's gonna work for the bikes that we want to design. You know, it's not gonna be a bike that's for everyone, but it is gonna be focused for someone like me who rides on the North Shore, and it's gonna do that really well. If you've ever picked up a Noli or looked at one up close, they definitely feel noticeably sturdier and more solid than other aluminum bikes that I've seen. I think one problem maybe with the industry is aluminum bikes have sort of become an afterthought. You know, they come out with their bike, it's a carbon bike, and then they do an aluminum version and it never feels as good. So I think people, myself included, sort of get this impression that aluminum bike means worse bike and that's definitely not the case with Noli. Uh, quite the opposite actually. You do have to really you have to ride one to appreciate it, but the aluminum here is in no way an afterthought. The way that they've designed the whole bike, they put a lot of thought into, well, all of the little details. So a few of the things that make this bike unique are, first of all, the fact that it has this straight seat tube so you can put in really long droppers is such a good idea. Uh, so many bikes, my reckoning included, I would run a longer dropper post if I could, but it's bent. Like the, t <laughs> the seat tube here is bent really high up. so. I can't put a longer dropper in because I can't put more of the post in. It, it has to stick out a little bit. And that's kind of annoying. In this case, you could run <laughs> an extremely long dropper and still run it slammed. And I like that a lot. Another thing that really sets Noli apart, I mean, probably the biggest thing is this four by suspension design. It feels great. Uh, I mentioned this in both of the Noli review videos that I did. Something about the rear end when you're riding just feels sort of like you'd expect a nice mountain bike to feel. I found it wasn't as difficult to set up. I didn't need to faff around with it as much. It definitely feels really unique, probably more on the softer side or on the supple side, which I like and obviously. So maybe if you're looking for a bike that is, you know, a real all arounder and you're really gonna be up out of the saddle pedaling hard all the time. You know, maybe that won't be the best for you, but in my case, or really anyone who's riding sort of the shore or any place like it, 
and you like maybe that softer suspension, the more supple suspension, the 4x is, it's great. And another thing that I like about the aluminum is, I think in the back of my head, I've always been a little nervous while riding carbon bikes about just hitting it or breaking it. I mean, obviously, <laughs> me breaking bikes is a real concern, so it's always in the back of my head. So, something about this Noli and the way that I know they put a lot of effort into thinking, how do we build a tough bike? And being not that concerned about being a weight weenie here and there, uh, that's pretty interesting. I like that. And the fact that you see lots of really old Nolis kicking around, that's a good sign. It means that, well, they, they still work. And so that's why I'm considering the Chilcotin. I also do kind of like the Warden, but I'd like to stick 29er and that's what we're gonna be looking at today is pretty much all 29ers. So we'll quickly go through this particular build, which is the DPGX Lyric build. We've got spank wheels and hubs. You've got a GX drivetrain, GX cranks, reverb dropper and dropper lever, race face affect stem and bar, Lyric fork, Maxxis tires, of course, and in this case, the SRAM code R brakes. Definitely a really interesting bike, and that's why I'm considering it, well, for my next bike. But let's see what else is here. This is the Santa Cruz Nomad, and it's the only 27 inch bike that I'm considering. Now this is the updated model, I believe for 2021. I didn't really love the previous models, but I had a chance to sort of play around on my friend's bike and kind of jump around on this one. And I've noticed that it feels quite a bit better to the point where I'm actually interested in buying it. There are a few things about Santa Cruz that sort of are unique to them. Uh, the VPP suspension, you see that on all their bikes pretty renowned. Uh, a lot of people really like it. I think on their older models, like I said, I didn't love it, but on this one they seem to have tuned it more to my liking. Another thing I really like is Santa Cruz is known for having great warranty, and of course that should make a lot of sense of why I'm sort of interested in Santa Cruz bikes. I use that warranty and I definitely get my money's worth. I believe they also will replace frame bearings for free. Uh, if your bearings run out, you just send them a message or something and they they'll send you bearings um, yeah the customer service sounds really good and that's actually pretty important when buying a bike I do also really like this sort of gloss red color you probably can't tell on camera but it's sort of uh, sort of a shiny very dark red brown color and it looks great and as probably a lot of you know how I buy my bikes uh, a lot of the time is <laughs> how they look. I like to have a good looking bike for sure. Now this is another bike that falls under the sort of enduro, maybe a free ride category, maybe a little more enduro uh, than some of the other bikes, but it's still 170 mil of travel in the front, 170 mil in the rear. But I have also heard that this bike pedals extremely well. And since for the most part I'm pedaling on fire roads, uh, that's not as big a deal to me because I am just gonna flip this climb switch and pedal up the road. So one thing that maybe I don't like is I don't really need my bike to sacrifice any of the performance to be a better pedaler because I am just gonna flip sort of the firm switch on the shock. And so if I could just have all the downhill performance and have a good pedaler when I flip the shock into climb mode, I think that would be great. But that being said, this bike still, I think, does a good job of, uh, well, does a great job of descending and it also pedals uh, quite well. Better than some of the shorter travel bikes that uh, I've seen other people review and compare. Now, these bikes are a little pricey, but I think that maybe it ends up being okay because you can think of that as sort of uh, you're buying warranty because they are so good with warranty and so good with the bearings that extra price is maybe justified if you're someone like me who's going to use it for sure. This particular build comes with the Float X2 Fox Shock in the rear, the Fox 38, uh, again factory in the front, code RSC brakes of course, RockShock Reverb dropper post, carbon SRAM cranks, X01 drivetrain, DT350 hubs with race face aluminum rims, and it's a full carbon frame. Carbon front triangle, carbon rear triangle. So that's the Santa Cruz Nomad, and it's a pretty nice bike. But let's see what else is here. This is the new Transition Spire, and it's probably the most regular of all the bikes. So Transition hasn't done anything fancy or crazy or outside the box on this bike, but that being said, 
everyone who's ridden it and if you looked at their views have said they really like this bike. I think they've just focused on making a nice bike. And in this case, this is the aluminum model, which I think I'd be more interested in. Like I said, I'm kind of being pulled back into the world of aluminum because maybe there's a bit too much hype around carbon. And again, this aluminum bike doesn't feel like an afterthought. I feel like they wanted to put together a nice, you know, aluminum bike that rides well. So unfortunately I haven't had a chance to ride this bike, but like I said, it's the reviews and my friends who have the bike who've really talked about how great it is. And I, well, I've pedaled it around here in the parking lot, but it feels nice, it feels solid, and it definitely feels like a bike I'd like to ride. It is 170 mm travel in the front, 170 mm travel in the rear. It's got a pretty steep C-tube angle, and it's pretty slack. All things that I really like. The one thing that I think Transition did do that's a little outside the box right now is have some external cable routing. The rear brake actually doesn't go through the frame, and I think that's actually a good idea because I've kind of faffed around with my brake lines a little more often than I should, and having to pull it through the frame all the time is kind of annoying. So it's nice that it's just here, and I don't think it looks bad at all. And actually on the flip side of that, sometimes having internal routing, sometimes it just pulls the cables oddly, and it can be more trouble than it's worth for sure. So you know what? I actually really like that it's on the outside of the bike and it's easily accessible. We'll quickly go through the spec of this particular bike. This is the XT build, so it's gonna have an XT drivetrain, XT cranks, it's got DT Swiss wheels and hubs. It's got their, I believe, Transition's own brand, Anvil, for bars and stem, which honestly, when it comes to bars and stem, as long as the, well, the, the geometry of the bars is decent, something that you like, and then they look good. A stem just needs to look good and not weigh a million pounds. And I think they've done a great job at having, for an in-house brand, that it looks great. I think, you know, I would totally ride this. I'm not gonna replace it, that's for sure. It comes with Fox factory suspension, 38 in the front, really like that. Float X2 in the rear, can't complain about that either. So even though I said maybe there's not any novel one thing about this bike that makes it stand out from the rest, I think it's just a really nice bike. It's a great price. I've heard it rides great. Uh, you know, a lot of viewers have ridden it and said it's some of their, you know, one of their favorite bikes. And that's why I'm considering it. It's just a solid bike. It looks great. I've heard it rides well. And at this price, you can't go wrong. So that's why I'm considering the Spire. But let's see what else is here. All right, so this is another bike that I think I'll put on the list. Mostly because when I looked at it the last time, a lot of you, apparently this is a very popular bike. A lot of people really like the Ibis Ribbo, especially because it's such a good value. And you know what? Let's take a look at it again. Now this is the SLX model, and I think that's actually, you know, this particular one is a great value, and I think it's got all the kind of the components that I'd like. I would definitely go with this model. And I also really like this baby blue color. I know I've always had sort of like black core mountain bike, bro bikes, but I'm kind of leaning towards, you know, something a little brighter, something you can actually see in a photo. And you can definitely see this blue bike. So I think it's pretty good looking. I think the other unique thing about Ibis is the suspension. Tons of people commented saying that this DW Link, that I, mean, I brushed by it a little too quickly. People really like this. They say it pedals really well and it descends really well. And based on the other sort of DW designed bikes that I've ridden, I, uh, I, you know, I want to tend to believe them. I pedaled around sort of here in the parking lot and stuff. I haven't had a chance to ride one. As soon as I can get a demo bike, I will definitely try to. Now the thing about this bike, although it is a 29er, it is smaller in travel than all the other bikes that we've looked at, except maybe the Chilcotin, but that one still rides like a bigger bike. So this is the shortest travel bike that we've looked at with 160 mil in the front and 150 in the rear. I know that is about the same as the Chilcotin we looked at, but I think this bike rides like a shorter travel bike. Not, not a short travel bike, but a shorter travel bike falling more into the all mountain category of things. Whereas with the Chilcoat 151, I think I would still be more willing to ride that pretty hard in the park and ride enduro. I think this falls under the category of all rounder. And well, that's partly in part because of the suspension. And I think that's why this bike is so popular. This is definitely the most all around bike that I'm considering. Probably the biggest reason that I'm considering it right now is because I don't really like pedaling. 
and anything that makes that easier is interesting to me. I do a lot of pedaling, but I don't like it. It's mostly for exercise and staying fit and things like that. But if it could just be a little bit easier, a little more enjoyable, I think I would do it more. And so that's where this bike comes in. You know, sometimes if you have a big heavy bike that's gonna be hard to ride and conditions aren't great, you're kind of like, eh, do I really want to go double suffer out there? Where if you have something like this and you're like, hmm, you know, the climb's not so bad, especially on this thing and the descents are pretty fun, you might be willing to get out more. So I think that's pretty interesting and thinking about getting this for my next bike. So we'll quickly go through some of the components on this bike. Ibis wheels and hubs. We got SLX drivetrain, SLX cranks. We got the Fox Float X2 factory in the rear. Really like this shock. And interestingly enough, we have the Fox 38 up front, which I think is an interesting choice that I would personally make, but I'm actually a bit surprised to see it on this bike. I would put a Fox 38 on this bike, even though it is sort of that more of an all mountain range of bike, but I want that 38 so I can ride it aggressively when I want to. And I really like that Ibis has done this. And that's one of the things, I mentioned this already about the bike, I think Ibis makes good choice and they have good value and they do things like this where they put a 38 on sort of more of an all mountain bike rather than some, you know, it doesn't have to be a free ride, crazy, basically a downhill bike. They looked at this bike and said, you know what, let's toss a 38 on there. Maxxis tires again, this time double acid guys as well. Again, a choice I would make personally, but I'm surprised to see it coming straight from the brand like this, but I'm surprised in a good way. I like that. Double ass guys, those, that's great. May slightly counteract the good pedaling ability of this bike. These tires run slow, but yeah, I mean, one of everyone's favorite tires, of course. Then we've got the SLX brakes. Again, really great brakes. We've got the in the house Ibis brand bars and stem. Probably change those out to something that looks a little bit better, but overall a great package. That's why I'm considering it for my next bike. And you know what? Maybe it will be. All right, that's it. Which bike do you think I'm gonna go with for next year? Is it gonna be the Norco Range? Basically that high pivot downhill bike. The Noli Chill Coton, the Aluminum Beast, the Transition Spire, just that all around great bike. Well, maybe it's gonna be the Ibis Ritmo. Now there's an all around bike. Or is it gonna be the Santa Cruz Nomad? Uh, obviously very popular bike and for a good reason. Let me know in the comments and my next video, well, it'll probably be showing you which bike I got. So I'll see you guys in the next one.